Guys, the NBA season is underway. The 2019 to 2020 regular season is about to start. And people are making their predictions, man. People choosing their favorites to win it all and ranking each NBA team on how they're going to do for the NBA season. So that is exactly what we're going to do today, man. I am not doing a squad builder today. We're doing something a little bit different. And as a huge NBA fan myself, and I'm sure you guys are too, it's always interesting to see. It's always fun to predetermine, to pre-rank, to predict the NBA teams, how they're going to do in the season, predicting the playoff teams and all that good stuff, who's going to win it all. So right now, man, we are on tiermaker.com, which is a really cool site people are using nowadays when they want to rank stuff and uh this one right here is made by spencer stevens now uh, he said it's made for king of the fourth quarter so i'm sure he did the video on this already but look man your boy mellow match is gonna do it too okay spencer so he says rank all 30 teams from the f tier all the way up to the s tier which is uh the superior tier obviously and how i see this man i'm gonna go ahead and label these little letters i'm gonna label them to fit what i think he means so f tier obviously are the worst teams in the league the ones that are probably going to be surefired uh lottery teams now the d teams are you know they're, they're bad teams probably not going to make the playoffs and uh yeah that, that's that tier right there c tier i think are teams that are gonna be fighting for a playoff you know the average teams the middle of the road teams and then the b tier i think are surefired playoff teams you know they're probably going to make the playoffs more more than likely and then the a tier i think are one of the best teams in the league but not quite championship contenders. And then S tier, the superior, clearly the superior teams above the rest of the, the league. Basically, the teams are gonna be fighting for a championship, all right? If you guys do go on to enjoy this video, drop a like, man. Let me know in the comments if y'all wanna see more videos like this, just me talking about NBA. Uh, just let me know in the comments, man, and drop that like. All right, so I was thinking about starting with the superior teams, but actually what I'm going to do here is start with the, the worst teams in the league, the F tier teams. I'm just going to, I'm not going to do this in any particular order. I'm just going to look at the lit logos here, the NBA logos, and see which ones I think fit a certain tier. So the first team I'm going to put in that F tier, the worst teams in the league, no doubt about it, man, I'm going to have to put the Charlotte Hornets there. Sorry if you're a Hornets fan, man. Uh, it's tough. That you lost Kemba Walker, obviously. That Hornets team is just not, they're just not deep at all. They have Terry Rozier, Nicholas Batum, Cody Zeller. And if those guys are your best players, then you know your team is not going to do that well. They're for sure not making the playoffs and they're probably going to be fighting for a number one pick next summer. Believe it or not, guys, I am actually going to put the Minnesota Timberwolves in that F tier. Again, man, this is just my opinions. You, you got to remember, man, the, the tiers I'm making here, this is in my eyes. This is my opinion. So if you don't agree with me, just let me know in the comments. You don't got to be mean about it, but just uh, share your thoughts and your opinions on why you disagree with me or why you agree with me, all right? I'm going to put the Timberwolves in the F tier. I just don't think they're that good. Carl Anthony Towns is there, obviously. Andrew Wiggins. Uh, they got Jared Colbert as a rookie, so that's one bright spot. But I feel like this is a team that's going to be uh, in rebuilding mode. I think Carl Anthony Towns wants out. There are reports that he's requested a trade. So uh, if he wants out, you know that's not a good that's not a good uh, hit hit to the locker room. And then Andrew Wiggins uh, still has been a very disappointing number one pick until he gets it together. I don't see the Timberwolves going anywhere, man. They're just not that deep next team i'm gonna put in the f tier guys believe it or not the oklahoma city thunder once a team that was always a sure-fired playoff team is now in the f tier in my eyes because look losing russell westbrook losing paul george obviously those are huge brutal hits they did get chris paul in return but you got to remember chris paul the, the likeliness of him staying in oklahoma city throughout the whole season is very very small i, I do think he's gonna get traded or he's gonna get bought out by the team the thunder are obviously a team if you look at the the roster they're turning things around and they're gonna do it by rebuilding all right they're gonna be in rebuilding mode just like the timberwolves now the last team i'm gonna put in the f tier guys this is the last team i'm gonna put in the f tier is the phoenix suns the phoenix suns yes they're gonna be bad again they are gonna be bad now unlike the other three teams the suns are looking up rather than down even with that they're still gonna be one of the worst teams in the league uh, i do love devin booker he's a great player obviously deandre ayton he can only get better and they got some pieces ricky rubio i, I believe they got ricky rubio they did lose a few pieces as well. They lost TJ Warren. But uh, just looking at that roster overall, you can't you can't say that they're going to be fighting for a playoff spot anytime soon, man. Until we see them actually win big games throughout the season and you see Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton showing signs of superstardom, then you can start arguing that they could be a playoff team. But right now, this year is not the year. Now, the D tier... You know, they're still bad teams, but uh, they're not going to make the playoffs. Probably not going to make the playoffs. 
First one is the New York Knicks. I am going to go ahead and put them in that D tier. I don't think they're going to be one of the worst teams in the league, but they're definitely going to be a bad team still. RJ Barrett is great. Mitchell Robinson, you know, they got Julius Randle and a bunch of role players they got. A bunch of veteran players they got throughout the offseason. Reggie Bullock, Wayne Ellington. But those moves are not big enough for them to take that leap, man. They're just, they're just not. Look for them to be in the lottery again this year. Now the next team in the D tier, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Darius Garland, Colin, Se Colin Sexton look like they're going to be a really good, really good future backcourt for this team. But uh, I expect them not to make any great moves this year. I think Kevin Love is probably going to get traded. Just like the other teams mentioned already, the Cavaliers are in rebuilding mode. So they're not going to need Kevin Love. They might trade him. They might trade Tristan Thompson away. I think this team is looking to get young and looking towards the future, all right? So don't expect Cavaliers to make any noise. Next team I got in the D tier is the Washington Wizards. And this one might be a little surprising uh, because this team actually has some talent. Obviously, they have Bradley Beal, John Wall still. John Wall's going to be coming back. But other than those two, man, this team is just not very deep. They're really lacking at the front court position. Thomas Bryant, a very under undersized center. Bradley Beal talks of him might getting traded. John Wall talks of him leaving as well. So, you know, the John Wall Bradley Beal experiment has not worked. It's been a thing now for what, seven years? They have I've never gotten past the second round this year though the roster isn't that terrible it's just not going to work out for them next team i'm putting the d tier guys is the memphis grizzlies now the memphis grizzlies are pointing up man just like the phoenix suns i mentioned in the f tier i think grizzlies are pointing up they drafted their rookie second overall pick john morant i think he's got a lot of promise to have jonas valanchunas they got some pieces there man i believe they got jay crowder from that trade and they got a couple pieces there man andre guadala is there but he probably won't last even though their future might be bright this is not the year where they're going to take that leap towards the playoff towards playoff contention maybe in a couple years they could be that playoff team but right now i'm gonna stick him in the d tier now there's gonna be a lot of teams in the c tier man i think there are plenty of teams that could be fighting for a playoff spot especially in the east there's so much talent so much young talent these days that i think the playoff picture is going to be very interesting man especially those those seeds six through eight what teams are going to be fighting uh for those seeds i think there's going to be a lot of them so let's start with the first team i'm going to mention the sacramento kings i think the sacramento kings man are for sure a really great young team don't be surprised if they're fighting for that playoff spot just like they did last season De'Aaron fox buddy healed Marvin Bagley looked very good last year. That team is young. That team is fast. They can score. And a new coaching change, man, with Luke Walton, I think that could work out really nicely. Luke Walton is young. The players are young. I think there's a good connection there to be seen. So Kings, uh, I'm going to say they're going to be fighting for a playoff spot this year. Next team, guys, I'm going to put, this is actually going to be surprising as well, the Chicago Bulls, who's been one of the worst teams the past two years. Uh, I think they could be a dark horse playoff team this year i personally don't think they're gonna make the playoffs but like i said don't be surprised if they're hanging around man that team has young talent wendell carter jr laurie markin and zach levine looks really good zach levine is nice they got Otto porter there the rookie kobe white uh, i think the bulls team can make some noise man like i said already i don't think they're gonna make the playoffs but uh if they do make the playoffs i will not be surprised next team i'm gonna lump in that c team is that c tier i mean is the dallas mavericks uh this one has this team right here has a lot of talent just looking at it on paper Luka Doncic and Chris Porzingis obviously I believe they signed Seth Curry in the offseason if Chris Porzingis could stay healthy and Luka Doncic could at least replicate 80% of what he did in his rookie year I think this Dallas Mavericks team could be that eighth seed and if everything goes well if everything goes to plan they avoid injuries they could be a playoff team next team I'm going to talk about in the C tier is the Detroit Pistons and this team right here although their roster right now might not be the same come all-star break there's also a team there's also a team right here that could be making some trades being that blake griffin is in his final year of his contract he's going to be a free agent uh, next summer when you look at the roster and what they've done the past couple years that blake griffin andre drummond dynamic uh their team is good enough to be a playoff team and then adding derrick rose they got joe johnson who looks very good and they also got a couple young guys there the, the detroit pistons are definitely still going to be hanging around that playoff contention uh area 
Next team I'm going to put, guys, the Orlando Magic. This team right here uh, did make the playoffs last year. Didn't do much in the playoffs, but they made it. And this year, uh, I don't see them doing... I don't see them getting worse, but I don't see them getting better either. The roster is basically the same. They have Markel Fultz now. He's healthy. Let's see what Markel Fultz can do for them. They just signed Vucevic to a huge contract, so we'll see if Nikola Vucevic can live up to that contract. Orlando Magic is one of those teams. They're just kind of okay. They're just kind of in the middle. Next team I'm going to put, man... This one is a little bit surprising. I don't know why my voice just got hecka loud there. This team right here is a lot of people's dark horse sleeper team, man. And I'm not I'm not surprised that they think that. This Atlanta Hawks team, Trey Young, who came off an amazing rookie year. John Collins, who looks like he's going to be a really great player for that squad for years to come. And they got a couple rookies, DeAndre Hunter, Cam Reddish. This team right here, man, they got some pieces. They got Evan Turner from the Blazers. Just a really young, dynamic team that can put points up on the board, even though they're not that deep and if you look at the roster that you probably won't know a lot of their names I, I wouldn't be shocked if they end up being the eighth seed next team i'm going to put in that c tier guys this one is going to be also kind of surprising the san antonio spurs now this one is tough this is one of the toughest teams to actually predict because uh, if you're talking about a greg popovich team it's hard to imagine that they don't make the playoffs uh, greg popovich is just one of the greatest coaches of all time so i don't see them missing the playoffs this year but at the same time i wouldn't be surprised at all if they don't make the playoffs with all the great teams in the west and looking at the spurs roster they have the rose and they have aldridge they have the jonte murray coming back their, their roster is definitely good enough to still make the playoffs but uh i actually would not <laughs> be surprised if they don't make the playoffs either last team guys i'm gonna put in the c tier the New Orleans Pelicans. This team right here, a lot of people are hyped about because of Zion Williamson, obviously, number one pick. Brandon Ingram is there, Alonzo Ball. They got JJ Redick, Derek Favors. You're looking at the roster, they look very good. They look like they're poised to be a playoff team. But being in the Western Conference with all those amazing teams in the West, all those teams in the West that could be fighting for a playoff spot, I don't see the Pelicans actually making it this year, but I do think they'll be making a noise, and I do think they could be hanging around that 9th, 10th, 8th seed, man. Not not quite making the playoffs, but almost, almost, man. They're going to be a young, bright team to watch. Now, moving on to the B tier, guys. These teams right here, I think, are for sure. They're for sure locked and loaded playoff teams in my eyes. First team I'm going to talk about, guys, the reigning defending champions the toronto raptors yes the raptors lost Kawhi leonard and obviously that is a huge huge loss but uh looking at their squad pascal siakam is due for a breakout year i think i think he'd be he could be great kyle lowry just signed an extension you know leading a team by himself i think he could do it man he's a really good point guard they still got marcus Gasol. they still got Serge Ibaka. fred van vliet is still there i think he could pick up some of that scoring Kawhi leonard left behind next team i'm putting in that b tier guys is the Brooklyn Nets with Kyrie Irving there one of the best point guards in the league DeAndre Jordan is there they didn't really lose that many pieces they still have Jared Allen Spencer Dinwiddie uh Karis Levert I do think they are a locked and loaded playoff team for sure now obviously if Kevin Durant was going to play this year and he was 100% healthy they would definitely be higher they, they would definitely be in a higher tier but because KD is going to be missing most of the season or probably the whole season uh, I don't see the Nets being higher than the B tier okay Miami Heat guys so three Eastern Conference teams in a row here. I think the Miami Heat are definitely, absolutely going to be a playoff team. That The rookie, Tyler Hero, I am really liking his game, man. I think he's going to be a really good starting shooting guard. They got Jimmy Butler. That's a great addition. They still have Goran Dragic. Bam Adebayo, the setter for them, could be a most improved player candidate. I just like their team. Eric Spolstra is a great coach. Uh, it's hard for me to imagine that the roster they have coached by Spolstra, uh, it's hard for me to imagine that they're going to miss the playoffs. I don't think they're going to miss the playoffs this year, guys. Next team in that B tier is the Indiana Pacers, so another Eastern Conference team. So uh, I think these four teams right here are definitely locked and loaded playoff teams. The Pacers, they have Victor Oladipo coming back. They signed Malcolm Brogdon. They still have Miles Turner, Sabonis. And the Pacers have always been a well-coached team, a team that plays defense. I don't see that changing this year, guys. So I'm going to put them in the B tier. Another Eastern Conference team, guys. I am putting the Boston Celtics right there in that B tier. I definitely think they're going to make the playoffs again. Brad Stevens is a good coach, a really good enough coach where he could lead any roster to a playoff spot. But uh, with that Celtics roster having Kemba Walker as that great scorer now, uh, their number one option, didn't really lose that much when they uh, traded away Kyrie Irving or let go of Kyrie Irving rather. And uh, hopefully Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, those young guys, Marcus Smart with the loss of Al Horford, with the loss of Kyrie Irving, hopefully they could uh, step their game up and have big seasons. Final team, guys, I am going to put in the B tier, the first 
Western Conference team, believe it or not, in this B tier. I'm going to put the Utah Jazz there. This Utah Jazz team, a lot of people are excited about. I'm not too hyped about them as uh, most people are, but uh, I'm not surprised that they're hyped about them. Look at their squad, Donovan Mitchell, Mike Conley, Rudy Gobert. I, I still think they're going to be a great defensive team, anchored by Rudy Gobert. Quinn Snyder is just a great defensive mind. It's going to be hard for them not to be a playoff team. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be actually shocked if they ended up being a four seed. But at the end of the day, man, I don't think I could put them in that A or S tier like a lot of people are. You know. As a whole, I just don't see them really being that elite level top five team. I just don't see it, man. They're going to make noise. They're going to win 50 plus 52, 53 games. But then if they get knocked out in the first round, I would not be shocked. Now let's move on to the A tier. And this A tier I see right here, the top teams in the league, but not quite championship contenders. They might end up having great regular seasons, might win a series or two. But at the end of the day, they probably won't end up in the NBA Finals going for that NBA championship, all right? So let's talk about the first team in that tier. I'm going to put the Houston Rockets there. A lot of people are saying uh, they could be in that S tier just by pure talent alone. I, I, I see why, man. I see why they're doing that. Of course, you got James Harden, Russell Westbrook. They still got Capella, Eric Gordon, PJ Tucker. Look, this, this team right here, this is a dynamic, Russell Westbrook and Harden, where it could either go wrong, it could go bad, or it could go absolutely great. This kind of reminds me, man. This kind of reminds me in that 2017-2018 season when the Thunder uh, picked up Paul George and Carmelo. A lot of people were excited about them, but what happened? They got ounced in the first round. And I'm not saying it's going to go wrong, but at the same time, I, I can't put them in that S tier yet because it's up in the air. They're just quite, they're too questionable, man. We don't know if that Westbrook Harden dynamic is, is going to work or not. Next team I'm going to put in that A tier, guys, is the Portland Trailblazers. This team right here made it to the conference finals last year, but did not get over that hump, did not get over the Warriors uh, in that conference finals. And I don't see that being any different this year. They're definitely not championship contenders in my eyes. They do have a great roster, Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum. I, I do think they can make a trade, man. I don't be shocked if they trade for someone like Kevin Love, because uh, this Portland team has a lot of trade assets. They have Hassan Whiteside, Nurkic. Uh, th this is going to be a great regular season team again. They could give teams like the Clippers, Lakers, Sixers, you know, they could give them some trouble for a couple games, but not an entire series, you know what I mean? First team off the Eastern Conference, I'm going to put in that A tier, guys, is indeed the Milwaukee Bucks. Now, Giannis Antetokounmpo, uh, he's just going to get better and better, man. Dude is an absolute beast. Uh, I'm not going to put them in the S tier, man. I just, I don't see a lot of teams in the S tier this year. In fact, I only have three teams in the S tier, and we'll get to that later. But the Milwaukee Bucks, I, I definitely think they're one of the best teams in the league, obviously. They're going to win 55 plus games again. They did lose a couple pieces, though, which I'm kind of worried about. They lost Miritich, and Miritich would have been a really good fit for them this year. They lost Brogdon. Uh, they did sign Wesley Matthews. And they do have a couple pieces there that could help out. They still have Bledsoe, George Hill, Brooke Lopez is still there. So the team is still elite, just not championship contenders. I don't see them being contenders, man. Next team, I'm going to stick in that A tier, man, the Golden State Warriors. Uh, this team right here is also tough to decipher. A lot of people, a lot of analysts, a lot of fans are saying the Warriors are in the decline, which obviously they are. But... Dude, you, if you look at this roster, they still have Steph Curry. They still have Draymond Green. Uh, D'Angelo Russell is not too shabby himself. When Klay Thompson returns, I mean, th that team was good enough to win a championship, right? Klay Thompson, Steph Curry, Draymond Green, that top, those top three players right there for that team were good enough to win a championship. So it's really hard for me and a lot of people to count them out. You just can't count them out. Last team, guys, I'm going to put in the A tier is the Denver Nuggets. Yes, a lot of people want to put this team in the superior tier, the S tier. I'm not quite there yet, man. I don't think they have that one player where you could just go to him to get a basket. Now, a lot of people will say that's Jokic. Yo I don't think Jokic is that kind of player, man. Jokic is an elite level player, but he's not that guy that could get you a basket whenever you want. Uh, Jamal Murray can be that guy, but he's still young, man. He's still young. This team is going to win 55 plus games. They're going to be a top three seed most likely. Uh, they'll make some noise in the playoffs. Championship contenders, though, not yet. Now the S tier, guys. Obviously, these three teams right here that you see are indeed in my S tier, so let's talk about them. Let's talk about the Los Angeles Lakers first. LeBron James, hopefully he's going to be healthy this year. Uh, I think he's going to be on a mission. He's going to be one of the favorites to win MVP. He's going to have a big year, man. But obviously the big story, Anthony Davis, that dynamic there, Anthony Davis, LeBron James, that's going to be great. They got some nice complimentary pieces in Danny Green, Avery Bradley. They're going to be one of the best teams in the league and definitely going to be fighting for that championship. The Philadelphia 76ers, I think they're on the class of their own in the East. 
might not agree with me, man. Some might say that's the B Milwaukee Bucks. But for me, man, it's the Sixers. It's the Sixers for me. Yes, they lost JJ Redick. They lost Jimmy uh, Jimmy Butler. Those are huge losses. But if you look at their squad, Al Horford, Joel Embiid, their front court is just so deep and heavy and, and big and long and tall. It's going to be hard for teams to stop this squad. Uh, you got Tobias Harris, Mike Scott. And, and then they also have Josh Richardson, which is going to be a really great complimentary, uh, complimentary starter. Play along Ben Simmons, just a great defender and someone that could get to the basket, could score in many ways. And then obviously, guys, the last team in the superior tier, you got to put the Clippers there. Whether you think they're the best team in the league or not, on paper, if you look at this team, it's hard not to put them in the S tier. You have Kawhi Leonard, uh, the reigning finals MVP, just a great two-way player. And then Paul George, another great two-way player who came off an MVP type season. Those two guys, along with Lou Williams, Montrez Harrell, Patrick Beverly, that team is going to look good, man. Landry Shamit. So uh, that's going to do it, man. We went ahead and ranked all 30 NBA teams. I know I ranted and kind of uh, talked more than I should have, but hey, man, when you talk about NBA, when you talk about basketball, it happens. It absolutely happens. So uh, let me know in the comments, man, if you agree with some of these takes or not, or disagree with it. Whatever the case may be, comment down your opinion. Maybe if you guys want to go ahead down below and rank your 30 NBA teams and tiers, you guys could do that as well, man. If you did enjoy the video, like I said, drop a like. Let's get 100 likes. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you on the next one, man. Peace out.